Riley. Hello everyone and welcome back to Forky Leads. Today we're doing another recipe. In front of me I have all the ingredients that we need. You'll be able to find them all down on the description below. Um, and today we are making chicken and vegetable pie with liquor. Now I know everyone's going to say uh, liquor is disgusting but got a bit of a twist on it and uh, I'm going to show you. It's really really simple um, and here we go. I'm going to be using this cake tin. Um, the reason I'm using a cake tin is making a massive one. What do you expect? Um, but to follow on from that I'm also using another tray. This is going to go into my oven right now um, because I'm going to turn it, get it going to preheat um, and I want this to be as hot as possible. If I was to put this just straight onto the rack um, the, the racks are going to run across like that and it's not really going to heat up the bottom. Um, the reason I want that to happen is because we are using short crust pastry on the bottom um, and I'm not pre-cooking it um, or prepping it in any way. It's going to go in raw with the, um, with the filling and then puff pastry over the top. So this being hot and this going on there will ensure that the bottom of your pie will be nice and crispy and not soggy. This is going straight into my oven in the middle shelf. I'm going to turn it on, full blast, um, just to let it preheat and off it goes. So for the first step, we're going to start making the filling for the chicken. Um, what I'm going to do is, as normal, start off with um, some oil in my pan. Um, I'm using, I'd roughly say about two and a bit tablespoons, um, because I'm going to try my best not to add any more fat after this. So we'll let this come up to temperature. So our oil is nice and warm. I've got a kilo of chicken here. Um, it is a big tin. If you were to put that in there, it's not even going to fill the tin. So that's where all the other vegetables come into play. Um, this is a kilo of chicken. I've diced really, really nicely. Um, if you can see that. And they're going to go straight in. You should be able to hear the sizzle. Now what I want to do here is I want to seal the chicken, um, but with that I'm going to season it. So I've got a nice, um, I've freshly ground some pepper. Here we are. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon worth um, of pepper because we like a bit of pepper, don't we? Um, then I've got sea salt. Now again, salt is all to taste, but in that goes. Um, and that's it for the moment. You're just cooking it with salt and pepper, letting it go. Um, this is another one of those recipes where the simple flavours um, should, should shine. Now once some of the chicken has started to turn white, um, the colour changes obviously because it's seeding. Um, from that whole colour of garlic that is in the description down below, I'm going to take about half of the garlic and I'm going to chuck it in with the chicken. Um, again, you can put it all in at once at a different stage if you wanted to, but I want to do it now because I want some of the garlic to go into the chicken in terms of flavouring it. Um, we are going to be, in essence, fully cooking this chicken um, in the pan before we do anything else. But I'm going to do my best to try and cook it so that it doesn't go dry. You want to try and keep it as moist as possible um, because you know chicken breast will go dry um, but everyone knows that regardless. Um, another method of you actually doing this is you could get a whole chicken, roast it in the oven, let it cool down, um, shred it to bits and then put that, that's this part of the chicken ready for you and it'll be good to go. Um, I sometimes do like doing that because there is a lot of flavour that comes out of the fat in the chicken um, on a whole chicken. Um, which is amazing and you get all the brown meat as well as the white meat um, but today we're only using the breast because that's the way we're going okay guys the chicken has probably been cooking for 10 minutes if that um, what I'm going to show you is um, better call it down I've picked up one of the bigger pieces of the, the cubes that I've made um, and what I want to show you is the fact that the chicken doesn't need a long time to cook look check that out does that look cooked for me it looks cooked yeah, perfect. Still juicy. Yeah, okay, there's not much flavour, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. But 
this alone is good enough. I'd happily eat some of that. So at this point, I'm going to take out all my chicken and I'm going to try and drain it as best as I can, leaving the fat in there. Um, now sometimes what happens is when you buy chicken from a supermarket, it will release quite a lot of water. For that point, I'm going to, um, once I've removed the chicken, I'm going to let the liquid that's left in here just cook a little bit so that hopefully the water will then evaporate and it will leave me with just the oil. So in my pan, you can see there's water and oil in here. Yeah, there are residual bits of, um, of garlic in there, but that's fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it cook out, and when I think that the oil um, is left in here and the water is evaporated, I can start adding my vegetables. Now with vegetables, I mean, you can use whatever you want, to be quite frank. Um, I'm using onions, leeks, carrots, and broccoli for mine, um, because they're just vegetables that you like. You can use whatever you want, parsnips, um, cauliflower, green beans, peas, anything that tickles your fancy can go in here. It's chicken and veg, that's it. Simple as you want. You don't want to overcrowd it though, let me get that straight. Four or five veg, cool, that's great. Because um, you're going to fill up a big pan. So in my pan, you can see there's water and oil in here. Yeah, there are residual bits of, um, of garlic in there, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it cook out. And when I think that the oil um, is left in here and the water is evaporated, I can start adding my vegetables. Right, so if you look back down at the pan, you can see that the water, the bubbles, are all water vapor evaporating, and it seems like it's going quite well. Um, for me at this point, I'm happy to put in the veg because I know for a fact that a lot of this is oil. Um, there isn't much water, the bubbles are, are sort of popping away, and you can see that it has now gone in from the sides, so the oil is separating from the water and the water is going. I'll give it another mix so I can um, explain to you what's going on. Um, if it does look a bit thick, that is because the salt, pepper, the chicken juice is all in here. This is all flavour from the chicken that we've just cooked and it's all inside here. So, the veg I'm going to put in all one by one, but I'm going to put it in terms of cooking time. So for me, carrots take quite a while to cook, so they'll go in first. I've got two, two carrots here. Um, diced quite like that. They're chunked, because I like them chunked. You can cut them smaller if you want to. Again, it's entirely up to you and your taste. Um, so we'll put that in. And if we look at the pan, you can see exactly, you can see, look, there's oil still in here, uh, mixed with a bit of the chicken fat that's come out, um, and it's all cooking really, really well. The, the pot itself will be seasoned because of the, the salt and pepper that we've put in. Um, I can still visibly see pepper because it was stuck in the oil and it was all there, ready for you to go. Um, so yeah, we'll give the carrots about a minute and then we'll go in with the next veg. Okay, I've given my carrots about two or three minutes um, and you can probably see they caramelise really, really nice. Um, this is what I was looking for because um, you want all that, the sugars and the fats to, to caramelise on that carrot. Um, they're not all the way cooked fully. Um, so I'll go in next with my onions, but again, I've diced, but um, they're not that small, they're pretty big, that's a chunk of onion. Um, again, entirely up to you how you want to do it, whichever type of size you want, it's all down to you guys. Um, there's no, you know, this is the way to do it kind of approach with this. Right, so the onions have had about two minutes. Now I'm going to follow in with the leeks. Um, it's a whole leek, and that's going straight in. The colours at the moment in this saucepan are incredible. You've got oranges, reds, greens. There's going to be more green going in in a second as well. So the leeks have had another couple of minutes, minute and a half to two minutes. Um, I'm going to put in roughly two tablespoons of water. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going on with the lid now and it's going to give it all a chance to steam um, and sort of start to cook through. Again, I like al dente vegetables. Um, if you guys don't, you cook them all the way through, it's fine. I'm going to try and leave a little bit of a bite because um, it differentiates between the chicken and the veg when it's in the pie. The 
if you guys want to check to see how much your vegetables are cooked, I'd always go in with the first veg, the one that's the longest um, time to cook. So for us it's the carrot, so I'm just going to quickly go in with a fork, poke into the carrot. I didn't have to eat it, I just like carrots. These are Where was I? These are good carrots. They're not too soft. They're soft on the outside, but in the inside there's still a bit of bite. Um, I don't know if I can prove this to you by doing this, but look, it's not mushed up and there's, it's still taking a bit of effort for me to, to sort of break it open. But they're cooked. Because I'm happy with where the carrots are and their texture and al dente-ness, um, I'm now going to go with broccoli. Broccoli takes minutes to cook. Everyone knows that. Um, I've included the stalks. I don't get rid of the stalks. Chuck them in. It's absolutely fine. Um, that's if anyone gets rid of the stalks. I don't know. Do you? Maybe comment down below. Let me know. Do you get rid of the stalks? Because I don't. Um, we'll eat them. I'm going to mix all the broccoli through. And um, obviously when I tasted the carrot earlier on when I showed you the carrot, I made sure that the seasoning was fine. There's enough salt, enough pepper. I don't need to add any more to it whatsoever. Um, I'm very, very happy with this as it is. Um, now, again, we're going to let it steam. Uh, I'm not adding any more water because the broccoli will release it. Um, and another couple of minutes and yeah, we'll, we'll come back. All right, so we've given the broccoli literally a minute, um, not more than a minute. Give it a quick mix, just making sure nothing's sticking and then we'll give it another minute. All right, so we've given it another minute. Um, looking at the, the mixture, it's going quite well, it's cooking very well. Um, you can see that the broccoli has started to wilt and it is now sort of breaking itself down. So I just want to check the, the, the cooked doneness of the broccoli. You can see here that there are flavours attached to it all around the front. That is good broccoli. Um, but unfortunately, at this point, I'm going to season a bit more um, because I don't think it's enough. I'm also going to add more pepper because I like pepper, like I said earlier. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your veg mix ready. So I'll turn it off and I'm going to take it out. Now again with the chicken, there is residual heat. It will continue to cook. Um, so personally, I, I would always undercook the veg slightly. Now guys, look at the colours on these veg. Look how colourful it is. It's so pretty. It is, um, this would probably be a joy for some people just to eat like this. We're moving on to the next step now and now is when we're going to add more fat. Um, we're using my favourite one, it's butter. Ah, not really. I've got a tablespoon of butter here. I'm going to go in with oil first so the butter doesn't melt, burn. In with a nice heat tablespoon of butter. Um, now I've got the rest of the garlic that we cut is going to go in now. Um, we're going to we're going to flavorize. This is the the beginnings of the white sauce part of the pie. Um, all I'm doing is garlic, salt, pepper, salt. garlic um, and like the um, aglio e olio recipe which if you haven't seen yet go and have a look at um, maybe I'll actually I can try and put it in the description somewhere here I'll try but I don't know if it's gonna work so you want to keep the, uh, the garlic pretty much white you don't want to cook it or make it go brown or caramelly um, so I'm gonna add a touch of water um, just because I want the garlic to soften um, and it will with this. Okay, so the garlic's had a couple of minutes, the water's evaporated. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of white flour, just plain white flour. So the flour's cooking well. Now I'm going to go in with milk. But I'm only going to put in, we'll measure it. Here's a, a cup of milk. I'm going to put it in slowly. It is full fat milk. You can use whichever one you want. There's no worried, there's no worries about that. Um, now, I'm going to go in with half of the cup of milk first, mix it through, mix it through, mix it through. You want all the flour to sort of go into the milk um, and it will thicken up, it will turn into a paste. Now, I'm 
now it's turned into a paste kind of like, looks like um, PVC glue that isn't quite um, set yet. So I'm going to go in with more of the milk. Now at this point, I've still got a little bit of milk left. I'm going to, I've turned the heat all the way down, all the way down. Um, and now, again, it's thickened up and it's looking, looking like that. Now the lumps that you can probably see are the garlics. Um, that's a cup of milk that's gone in there now. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. And then I've got mustard, just normal, normal yellow mustard. Two heat spoons. Now this is going to provide some heat to the meal. Give that a little mix through. Now you can see that it's um, slightly thickened up again, um, even though it's on low heat. And I'll have to show you guys. There we are. There we are. Yeah. Look at that. Nice, and, nice thick. and thick. So now I can go back in with my chicken. In it goes. And the veg. In it goes. Give it a quick stir up. Get it all mixed up together. I'm going to quickly show you what it looks like now that I've mixed it all together. Um, um, the colours are, are delightful. You can you see, can see that, the white that the white sauce that we've made has coated everything really, really nicely. Really nicely. Everything, everything looks shiny because of all the, all the lovely creams and from, the from the milk and things like that. The reason I've left this quite dry, now I know visually it's going to, you're going to think to yourself, oh it's a pie filling, it's really really dry. But my sauce is going to be the liquor in this um, instance. So I'm happy with this as it is. I'm going to move it to one side and I'm going to let it cool down. So I left my um, pastry in the fridge. It's quite a hot environment right now. It's going to go too hot. You're not going to be able to work with it. Um, so first, I'm using a short crust pastry. And in the, the tin, I'm just going to quickly chuck a little bit of oil in, just a few drops. I'm just going to quickly brush it all inside. This is to ensure that stuff doesn't get stuck to the tin um, itself. First things first, the short crust pastry, um, we'll go in with that. Now look, you don't have to be perfect when you're making pies. You've got a lovely mould, the mould will do the work for you. Don't worry about what it looks like when you're putting it together because the, the fact is, once it's cooked, that is when people or you will know what you've done right or wrong. Um, so, there's a whole sheet here. I'm not doing anything to it. I'm not put, you know, rolling it out even more or anything like that. I'm leaving it as it is. I'm gonna pop it in to my tray. Then I'm gonna push it down as far as I can. Now what's gonna happen when you push it down? You're gonna start, you're gonna start getting these overlaps. overlaps. These. these. Don't, worry, Don't worry about it. Just open it up, put it, put it, put it and then it will go all the way across. <clears throat> and if things do overlap and you can't pull it even more, just, it's fine, just sort of mould it. Mould it, mould it, mould it, mould it, and you'll be good, and you'll to, be good go. to go. Now look, look what it looks like. That's just, That's just one sheet that I've put in. And it looks, and it looks crap. crap, doesn't it? It looks terrible, you, but you've managed to get the bottom of it done. You've got all of these flappy bits, flappy, flappy bits, out there. Now all I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna rip them, rip them, rip them like this. Look, rip, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. Rip it. Now, this, this part, part I'm gonna roll up, I'm gonna flatten down, and all I'm gonna do, just paste it in, paste it in, and you're okay. Don't worry too much. Everything will fall into place as you want it to, and that's fine. Okay, so I've lined my tin with it the short crust pastry. pastry. Take a look here. Take a look here. It looks like a botch job. Like I, I know it does. I know it. But the fact of it is, fact... you put it against a lovely tin, so that outside visually it won't be wrong at all. And at this point, we'll go in with our chicken mix. Um, I know for a fact that mine hasn't quite cooled down enough. Um, if you guys want it to cool down a bit more, please go ahead and let it. Um, but in we go now. With our mix. The mix is literally near enough to the top. Check that, Check that out. out. 
it is, it is near enough at the top. It's looking good. Give it a couple of pop downs um, so the air comes up. Now, this is um, this is puff pastry. I like the con contrast between um, puff pastry and short crust pa pastry when it comes to pies. Um, and again, I'm not doing anything to it. I'm not rolling it out thinner. I'm not dusting it. No, nothing. Putting it straight over my tin. And if you look at my tin, it is more or less covered. At this point, all of this excess pastry, I'm going to rip. Now, now that the pastry is over the top of your your, um, your tin, you're just going to sort of just just push it, push it with your fingertips, nice and gently, and fold, and fold it all into, into the tin, and, and get, get the short crust, short crust pastry, pastry and, the and the puff pastry, pastry to meet, to meet in, some in some way. Um, they, don't they don't have to stick together, together but, you but you just want them to, to, to meet, to meet in, some in some way and to form, to form a nice, a nice crust. So this is the leftover puff pastry. You don't have to do this, you don't need to do this. It's entirely up to you whether you want to or not. Um, but I'm gonna roll it out again and just cover the top of my pastry. When you're re-rolling the puff pastry, yes, you do need to put a little bit of flour down because it will just stick to your pan. All right, so I've made a little round nanish type of, um, of cup there. Again, it doesn't matter that it's not perfect. It's absolutely fine. Then I'm going to take a knife and It doesn't matter if it's not round or anything like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my knife and just randomly put slits in anywhere, anywhere you want. I'm going to cut them up. Now when I open it up, look, you'll see little holes from where I put all the slits. This is just patterning. Is patterning. Again, it's, Again not it's not important. You don't have to you do something, something like this. Something like this. Um, then all I'll do is I'll put it over the pie, stretch it so the holes are visible. Um, again, more character to what you're making. Like that. Like that. And this essentially, guys, is you ready? I'm going to um, egg wash this. Right, egg wash done. And this is now going into my oven on that plate that I spoke about right at the beginning of the video. Not on a wire rack, on the plate. That plate should be piping, piping hot now. It'll hit the bottom of your, your pie pan and it should make a really, really nice crust. So in it goes, 180. For about half an hour, I will keep an eye on it just to make sure that it doesn't burn or anything like that. Um, but here we are, pie ready. Also at this point, if you want to, and you've cooled your internals enough, this can go straight in the freezer and then you can use this on a different day. Absolutely fine, nothing wrong with it. Just make sure you cool the insides properly before you put the top on. You don't want any poisoning or food poisoning or anything like that. Um, so yeah, into my oven, 180, um, roughly half an hour to 40 minutes. So just quickly, while we're waiting for the pie to cook, um, I've got my the, the pot that I used to cook the filling in and I've put that back onto the heat. Haven't cleaned it, nothing, I've just left it as it is. Um, and in here, I've got 500 mils of fish stock. Now, the reason I'm using fish stock is generally, if you go into a pie and mash shop, they'll have jelly deals. Now, I think what they would have used is the water that they've cooked the, the eels in to make the jelly deals in as their stock. So, fish stock it is. Um, in it goes. 500 mils. Now, you, what you want to do is you want to bring it up to the boil. And while that's coming up to the boil, I'm going to get some corn flour um, and just turn it into a, a slurry. So you need what a tea, just a heaped teaspoon um, in some cold water. Fun fact: you can't put water into corn flour. You have to put corn flour into water, otherwise it won't work. Um, if you guys want any more fun facts, then leave me a comment down below, and I definitely won't listen to you, and I definitely won't give you any more. So, our um, our fish stock 
has now come up to the boil. All of the stock that you put in has picked up all the residue from the pan that you've had before, including the bits of garlic that's left in there, the bits of veg that's left in there, the bits of chicken flavour that's left in there, all there. And at this point, I'm going to put in a tablespoon of tarragon, dry tarragon. Um, um, if you're using fresh, fresh, I'd say use about two tablespoons. This is dry, I'm using one. Quite overpowering, um, but in with a table of tarragon. And then in here, as you saw me do earlier, I blitzed up um, a bunch of parsley, flat leaf parsley, and a bunch of coriander. coriander. And that's what it looks like. I had to add a little bit of water in just to, to loosen it and let the, um, the mixing take place properly. In we go with all of that. So everything's come up to the boil. The, the fish stock's come up to the boil, the parsley that we put in has come up to the boil, the coriander and the tarragon. It's all mixed in lovely, nicely. Um, I'm just going to put a bit more pepper in. Um, my cornflower slurry, again. That will just go in now. And that is literally it. Okay, so everything's heated up very, very nicely. It's all come together and it's turned into a lovely, lovely thick sauce now. Um, I'm turning off the heat because it is done. I want to show you what this looks like. There, there we are. are. The corn flour has just gone in obviously, so it will take a bit while to thicken up. Um, but once it does thicken up, this should be very, very tasty. So I just want to take this opportunity before I serve up and show you our delicious pie. Um, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and most importantly, leave us a comment down below so we know what we're doing right or wrong. We love to hear from you guys and we want to hear more. There's not enough commenting going on, people. It is done. Um, the pie is looking good. It's got a nice colour to the top. Um, just take it out now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Now, let me, before I drop it, quickly show you the top of the pie. Look at that. And we've got leakages. I can show you the top of the pie and look at that. That is amazing. Just opening it up now. Um, now what I'll quickly show you is around the sides of the pie. Can you see? Look at that for a pie, guys. That is amazing. Look all around the sides. It has the, the pastry is bloody hot. The pastry has gone nice and crispy around the sides. Um, and we're looking fantastic. <laughs> Look at this pie. Look, it's, it's come out lovely. lovely. Guys, this is what it looks like once, once I've cut it. it. Um, I just want to point out, out look how that, that the, bottom the bottom of the pie, pie is nice and, and crunchy. crunchy. You've got a lovely filo here. Um, and, and I'm just serving it with some mashed potatoes that I've made, simple mashed potatoes. Um, and is the liquor. Check this out. So guys, here's the final product, and as always, I've got to try it for you guys. I'll try the pie and the liquor first. Yep, exactly what I want to do. You're getting the short crust pastry, then flakiness from the puff pastry, then you've got nice carrots, nice chicken, everything's cooked lovely, it's not dry and it's not overcooked and nothing's mushy inside, which is the biggest thing for me when it comes to pies, sometimes you buy a pie and everything inside is mushy. Now the liquor, I know some people aren't going to enjoy the liquor or want to even try the liquor, but please give it a go. The love that this dish shows is by far the greatest. We got pie and mash sound with a little bit of liquor. How do you feel about that? Huh? Top and to pan, mate. Top and to pan. That doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. Whatever. Here, yeah, me old Micah. How about some pie and mash, me old son? You want some pie and mash, son? Huh? Little bit of a bubble and knobble, mate. Huh? You, you want a bit of a giraffe, do you? You want to come to me, you'll have a bit of a giraffe. How about that?